Welcome back. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken, as we showed you earlier, was in Kiev jamming, to a, jamming at a bar to Neil Young's Keep on Rockin' in the Free World. But there was another more consequential reason he was there. My guest tonight is a former State Department official in Russia, senior fellow and managing director of the Alliance for Securing Democracy, David Salvo, up late with me tonight here in studio on The Final Five. Uh, good to see you. Good to see you. Talk to me here about, first of all, the, the symbolism of this, because uh, it was a long road to get the funding for Ukraine, to get people on board with that. Blinken was there at a bar. Something that you've seen him do during your time working in the State Department. But uh, really, the symbolism of that was much more than just a guy at a bar. Yeah, for sure. I mean, the secretary's trip to Kiev really comes at both a complicated time, but also an opportune time. It's complicated because it's been a tough stretch for the Ukrainian military. Yeah. I mean, they've suffered setbacks on the, on the battlefield in various parts of the country, the east, the south, the northeast. Um, and these are sensitive areas. These are, this is the, you know, really the first time in a while that Russia's made serious territorial gains um, since you know, er, much earlier in the conflict. But it's opportune because Congress finally passed the aid package, 60 plus million, billion dollars. It's time for the Ukrainians now to take this aid and show what they can do on the battlefield. When we saw that, that time where really the funding was, for all intents and purposes, uh, it, it had run out, at least what was authorized and mandated by Congress, did that cause damage to the Ukrainian cause? I think it's hard not to conclude that it did. I mean, look, they, the Ukrainians, when they've had the ammunition, the equipment, the, the materiel, they have been a really impressive fighting force. Mm -hmm. I don't think anyone expected them to be able to defend their country the way they did against a much you know, bigger, larger, better equipped military uh, in Russia. And, and it has. And, and when they've had the equipment, they've been able to demonstrate they could hold their ground. Without it, it has allowed Russia to make these, these gains in regions that Ukrainian forces have held now for well over a year. So it's hard to conclude otherwise. When we look at things in this country and, and on the international stage, I mean, clearly there are partisan lines through everything. This is one of those issues where there are many Republicans who support, I would say, uh, really, it seems like a majority. It's more or less a vocal minority who are the ones speaking up against it. I mean, I've had former Governor Jim Gilmore on the show of Virginia many times who has talked about who's a, a staunch conservative but saying we cannot let Ukraine fail here uh, but on the other side there are people saying how much longer how much more how much more money how much more material can we can we send there before uh, we can conclude that maybe it's a futile effort and that's a, a reasonable position and I, I don't think it's a partisan position I don't think it's partisan to say we fully support Ukraine we think that the Ukrainian cause is just and also question at what point does you know this largesse sort of run its course? Yeah. There isn't really anything beyond a stalemate on the battlefield. I mean, I would love to support Ukraine in perpetuity because I, f I think that its cause is just. It is facing a war of aggression from its much larger neighbor. But at some point, it is a question of resources. Can we do this for 5, 10, 15, 20 years in a row without really changing the situation on the ground. This was something that uh, House Speaker Mike Johnson had, had been on board with, and you know there are, they want to put some strings attached to it. And again, as you said, sure. you, you, want to, you want to make sure that the money and the equipment is going towards the right causes there. But when you have those loud voices, like the Marjorie Taylor Greens of the world, uh, who many people within her caucus are calling her Moscow Marge, uh, why, why do you think that there is this, this ferocious opposition to helping Ukraine? Well, it's, I think it's premature. I think Ukraine has demonstrated that it can push back and inflict serious damage on one of the United States' major adversaries' military. Like, it is in American interest if the Russian military is degraded. Um, it chose to wage this war in Ukraine, not the other way around. So it is in our interest to fight, to help Ukraine fight back. Mm -hmm. But, you know, look, the reality is the situation on the ground is largely a stalemate. Sure, there are some territorial gains back and forth, and sure. there have been over the last few years. At some point, you want this conflict to end. It's not in our interest for this conflict to, to last in perpetuity, too. So I understand why, in time, there might be a push to get the sides to the negotiating table. I don't think that's the moment right now. So I think that's why there's, there's pushback. And if, and if they're at the negotiating table, I mean, what is it, what, what's the end result? Do they, do they cede territory? Or? That's it. I mean, really, you're, you're putting a gun to Ukraine's head. And why would, why would we do that? Ukraine has said, we will not concede any territory right now. It's their country. They want to fight. Let them fight. I, that's my view. Like, they, should, they deserve to, to defend their country. And Russia is clearly in this for the long, long haul. They've reoriented their entire economy, their entire society to support this war. 
they're not going anywhere. So what are you what are you gaining by forcing Ukraine Ukraine to come to the negotiating table today? Yeah. Well, we're going to see where that all all that goes, but it is it, it's also it's inspiring and I think also a bit frustrating that we're still having these conversations two years into a conflict that people thought was going to be over and done with just like that. I think that's fair. David Salvo, good to see you. Thanks for having us. Great to meet you. Likewise. Final five is back right for this.